Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. So in this video, I'm just going to take a quick look um, at what's going on in terms of the different blockchains and gaming on them. So um, coming to the end of 2020 is kind of a good time to take stock of what's going on. Um, so um, I'm on the DAP Radar website. So this is just the default listing of, of, of DAPs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to the games category. So this is just look, looking at all the games um, and I'm going to go via the different blockchains. So that radar actually tracks 17 blockchains. Um, not all of them have, have games on um, or at least active games. But let's just have a quick look through and see uh, what's going on. So the first one I'm going to click on is Ethereum, obviously well known <laughs> as, as the kind of the, the prime mover for uh, blockchain games. And um, this is uh, this listing is organized by um, the number of uh, daily active unique wallets over the last 30 days. So we're taking a look at how many active wallets um, were interacting with these games over the last month. Um, so um, Axie Infinity, uh, we've got uh, almost 18,000 there. Um, it's going through a big uh, growth phase at the moment. And as we look down the list, um, there's some, some you'll know, some you kind of won't know. Um, some of these are kind of live, some of them are, are less live. But we can kind of see there's, you know, we've got to the top 10. Um, everything in the top 10 has at least kind of 300 um, active unique wallets over a month. I mean, that's not a lot in the big scheme of things, but um, you know, it's a few hundred. So there's, there's some sort of activity here. I mean, some of these have kind of uh, uh, some of their activity happens kind of on other chains. So God's Unchained is kind of building its own um, side chain. And things like the sandbox aren't really live yet. So this is just people trading um, the the, uh, the land um, NFTs and stuff. So, so we, I'm not going to go into all the detail of what's going on with all these, but we can kind of see there's there's like a, a broad a broad approach there, and, and there's some there's some games with some activity at least. If we go to EOS. There's still quite a lot going on EOS. So certainly look at the top Upland, and again another game in 2020 that's seen a lot of growth. So um, twelve and a half thousand daily active unique wallets over the last month. Uh, then we have another one, you know, a few on, uh, you can look at the top 10 here, actually about the same as Ethereum, so a few, uh, actually a bit more. So some games with hundreds of, of active wallets over the month and, and a few with it, a thousand. Um, so uh, some of these games um, I've kind of discussed and played over, over in the uh, in the last year. Let's have a look at Tron. Um, so Tron, not, not so much actually going on. Um, so Tron had, did have a lot of games kind of last year, seems to have died away a little bit. We have this the number one game on Tron is called this... Um, Zero one, uh, one zero one game. It's actually more of a kind of gambling app, really. Um, so if you look at the top ten here, when we get down to the bottom here, there's not a lot of activity happening here. So not so only the really the top six have have hundreds of of players. Um, IOST, um, not a lot going on there at all. Um, that's kind of more of an enterprise blockchain really at the moment. Uh, Loom, Loom's dead, so uh, nothing going on on Loom. So. Uh, well, a bit of Axie Infinity, they're still trading. The, actually, let's go back to Axie. Um, so on Loom, it still looks like they're still trading some land on that, so that's why there's a bit of Axie Infinity stuff on there. Um, but Loom's basically dead for games now. Um, Ontology, again, nothing going on here um, because it's all about enterprise. Thundercore's an interesting one. So there's not many dApps on Thundercore, and these are all kind of um, centralised dApps. A um, lot of activity on them. Um, you can see it's all kind of the same. So basically, you, these are very simple, like almost like hyper casual mobile games, and people are incentivized to play these because they get rewarded in in the TT token. So so there is gaming going on here, but it's a very specific sort of incentivized gaming. So uh, don't take that terribly seriously. B chain, um, nothing. Um, waves again, not really anything going on on waves. Neo once touted as the uh, Chinese Ethereum, um, dead for gaming. Um, Wax. Uh, a little bit of stuff going on here. So there's been quite a lot of uh, activity with Wax in terms of NFT sales this year. I've always been surprised that Wax doesn't have more gaming going on. So we have Prospectors been around for a, over a year now. Uh, this Wax Tycoon game, which is like an idle game. Um, Dark Country, a new game kind of coming out. We'll see how that gets on. The rest of the stuff, mm, not really. Um, Zero X Warriors and Zero X Racers now dead projects. Um, Steam, uh, we have Drug Wars. Actually does okay, I've not played that one yet. So Drug Wars. Uh, one game on Steam with a bit of activity. Hive, I guess we all know Splinterlands, um, doing uh, pretty well. The most popular blockchain game in terms of daily active unique wallets. Um, it's got about 9,000 over the month. Um, so pretty pretty core uh, kind of fan base for that, people playing that every day. And actually Crypto Brewmasters creeping up there. So two games there with, with a bit of activity. Um, not a lot of games in total. Bora is actually a game platform. 
a mobile game platform at South Korea, very early stages. There's this Seven Guardians of Bora game, which is actually quite an interesting mobile game. Not much blockchain in it, um, so not many users. Um, okay, uh, the Binance Smart Chain. This is a finance chain. Um, so no surprise, there's not a lot of games on it. There is this Battle Pets, Pets game, which is kind of linked into a DeFi app. Um, so again, not really what we would necessarily consider a traditional blockchain game. But it's got a few hundred, but uh, Binance Smart Chain, mainly um, uh, DeFi. Let's have a look at other quickly. Um, and Lightbringer, the one game running on the Litecoin blockchain that launched in September. Um, and the one I'm really looking at um, here is Matic. So, so um, what's interesting here is Matic, um, is th there's not a lot of um, apps on here, as we can see. Um, certainly not a lot with any activity, really only, we can say, kind of a, you know, a handful. Um, but what's interesting here with Matic is Matic is what we call a, a layer two solution. So Matic kind of works hand in hand with Ethereum. And because games have had a lot of problem with Ethereum gas fees, now some games are trying to, to, to work on Matic because you can run run all your game on Matic. And then there's a bridge bridging solution so you can take NFTs to and from Ethereum. So you would take your NFT from Ethereum to Matic to play the game. And then if you wanted to sell the game, uh, sell the NFT on OpenSea, you'd, you'd bridge it back to Ethereum. And th th that is pretty finicky. That's not an easy kind of, um, that's not a frictionless process at all. Um, but we are starting to see some adoption on here, which is kind of um, why I thought it'd be worth having a look at. So Zero X Universe was a game pretty popular on Ethereum. Very expensive smart contract interactions uh, basically ethereum gas prices killed it and it moved over to to matic and we can kind of see actually pretty steady um you know over a thousand two hundred uh players on a monthly basis zed run is a, a kind of new game it's, it's kind of a horse racing breeding game um that's launching on matic so a few hundred there blockchain cuties universe now um i think across four or five different blockchains a bit of usage there um and we have this crypto assault game that was running on ethereum um and uh just launched actually mega Cryptopolis. So that's an interesting one to, to look at, keeping an eye on that one. So this is a quite highly regarded game running on Ethereum and Tron. And now the Ethereum stuff has all moved on to Matic. So this game has doesn't have tons of players, but it has um, some quite interesting design stuff going on. Some quite interesting uh, economy stuff going on as well. Um, and it's multi-chain and the Ethereum stuff has now all moved to Matic. So it'll be interesting to see whether um, we start to see a big uptick ticking people um, being on Matic because it gets around this this kind of uh, what we call scalability, gas price um, issues um, and allows kind of, it's much faster blockchain. Um, so it's better for gaming from that point of view. To a degree, we have seen this in the past. So um, this time last year, we were kind of seeing this with Loom. So Loom was a similar sort of um, technology that people were um, announcing they were going to be using Loom and, and, and Ethereum um, and use, use Loom as a side chain and Loom then totally changed their business model and basically um, stiffed everyone. <laughs> so basically no one, you know, Loom, Loom does exist, but um, not really for games anymore. So we had these games that were announcing on Loom and now um, obviously it didn't really deploy. So it's not that this kind of layer two solution stuff it doesn't come without any risks. It does come with risks that obviously the company who say they're going to do something going to do something and actually be around. So so keeping an eye on that. But I think it is interesting that but I think we'll start to see in 2021 um, people deploying um, on, on, on kind of Matic as as um, a, a scaling solution and, and, and potentially not have these very expensive NFTs that have been driving a lot of the activity. Um, but it kind of becomes a bit, a bit more of an experimental uh, blockchain where you can kind of launch maybe smaller games and faster games and a bit more gamey games um, if you want to do that sort of thing. And it does link to Ethereum if uh, if you want to kind of push people in that direction. So that was worth uh, looking at, um, I think, um, giving a brief overview of what's going on in the game space. Um, hope it's interesting. Um, please do subscribe to the channel if you find this sort of stuff interesting. We bang on um, every day about blockchain games because <laughs> that's what we like. Um, so if you like that too, please do subscribe. But thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon.